Hola, welcome back to Peanut Butter Nay Time. As you can see, I'm in a different place. Um, I have re, I've created a new pod area. And to be honest with you, Alex actually did this. Um, he surprised me when I came back from a trip to the US and he had like done all this home reno. And you know what? This goes back to like the whole like TikTok trend. It's like, if he wanted to, if he wants to, he would. If he, what is the word? It's like, it's like a, if he, he would if he could or he if he wants to do it he'll do it whatever anyway whatever that's just Alex anyway so for this episode I'm trying out holding the mic um I'm holding it in my lap just more of a casual relaxed like let's chat kind of situation so today I wanted to talk about a topic I actually tried to make a video slash podcast on this a while ago and I just felt like it wasn't right I wasn't getting the right like wasn't communicating what I wanted to communicate in the podcast and I think it's because it's kind of a difficult topic and it's a topic that kind of flies under the radar without us realizing. And that is about changes. Um, so I think change is a funny thing um, because I feel it's something that just happens in life to different degrees and at different rates, almost without us noticing. Um, and I hear a lot of people kind of say like, oh, change is so scary. You know, that's something that's always thrown around and I have like friends who say like, I don't like change, just don't like it, I'm not into it, right? Um, and it always makes me think a lot about it because I think maybe I don't really sit down that regularly enough as well and think, oh, do I like, do I like change? Um, and I, I'm also keeping in mind like everybody has a different comfort level with change, right? Like, and I think it's definitely something maybe the more you experience change, the more it feels normal and natural, but there's definitely no like good or bad position to be in in terms of how you process change um like all your personal view on it I think it's just more about in this podcast I wanted to kind of just discuss it and kind of break down like my observations of change and where I feel like it affects people the most or myself or from what I've experienced and then also how I feel is the best way to kind of like cope with change um and once again, there's like no right or wrong way to do this. I'm just sharing my thoughts. Um, so I think obviously there are like some really big changes that are more obvious. Like, oh, I changed my hair color, right? Like something like that. It's very surface based. It's very obvious. But I think often like the most important changes or like the most important impactful changes, whether good or bad, definitely happen at a slow rate and behind the scenes. Like you don't really notice it happening. Um, and I also kind of feel that compound compounding change is what scares people the most. You know what I mean? Like it might be that one instance, mm, okay, I can handle that. But like change over time when you don't realize it is something that cha- that really scares people and I think like makes for some bad experiences. Um, I personally think that change can be a really good thing and I do think it can also be a slippery slope um, but not independently. I think in a combination but in a combination of uh, like with with in a com- with in combination sorry that's what I'm saying in combination with other things it can be a slippery slope um, in different ways. So yeah I think I've witnessed change really like bring tension between people um, you know bring conflict or just like people stop hanging out with each other or like personally people struggle with certain change because like something physically isn't the same anymore right um and I think often people don't really recognize that change is the biggest thing that's affecting them they like kind of think more about like oh xyz isn't the same anymore but they don't realize that it's like your coping like your coping coping mechanism with change that is impacting the whole situation so let me kind of just like flesh this out more with examples. As you guys know, I love a good example. Um, so I think examples of like where change kind of feels less scary is something like changing, yeah, cutting your hair from like long beneath your, your boobs to like above your boobs. Okay, for some people that's a really big change, but generally that's a change that most of us could cope with and we'd be like, all right, fine. Because you know what? Like the repercussions of that change kind of feel small it's like oh the hair will grow back right like whatever rate your hair grows it's going to grow back in some shape or form worst case scenario like tie it up like you know there's things that you can do to kind of mitigate 
the negative impact of that change if you don't like it on the other hand you could get this haircut and be like oh my god i feel so free like i'm gonna go shorter like this is my new my new um alter ego this is who i love to be how why didn't i cut my hair all this time ago also a different view right another thing of like, change is like small things that you do in your routine so i think a lot of people like you know set new year's resolutions like i'm gonna go to the gym every day right that's like a change that people i think are making more for like the positive and they have good intention behind it so i feel like these surface level like action oriented very conscious changes are the ones that i feel like are less harm like less i wouldn't i don't want to say the word harmful because i don't think change is necessarily like really harmful i just think that the thing that people that can cause people to be in situations where they feel a little bit more nervous or I would say maybe like that's a sort of change that doesn't feel like from an individual perspective like it's really that big a deal um so yeah I think those changes are just chill but I think um when you think about these small changes, right, and you start to compound them into like lots of small changes in a person or in a situation or in a location, right, um, that's when I think when they're bundled, you see the biggest impact and it's catalyst for certain scenarios. So um, let me just um, talk about some other examples, but I also want to do that in together with like why I think change scares people most. I think I'm gonna start with actually why I think change scares people most. I think one, I think feeling of familiarity is gone. So I think up until a certain point, right? Like I say, right, when you're young, you feel like time is going so slow because you've only lived like maybe like, say you've lived like 18 years in your life. It's like, okay, that went pretty slow. Like, because like, you know, so much happened in a short amount of time, right? And then when you get older, you look back and you're like, oh my God, so much happened. Life is going so fast. You know what I mean? Um, so I think when you get older, you definitely hold on closer and tighter to this feeling of familiarity. And I do it very often um, with very specific things. It might be like a dish, you know, like I love tortellini carbonara because I used to grow up eating it when I was younger. My parents would make it for me. You know, we would go to the local Italian restaurant and I would gobble down like a whole plate to myself. And it was a very like comforting feeling, right? Um, and so not being able to like cook that dish myself or find that dish somewhere else makes me feel like, you know, a sense of longing for something because I don't have that sense of familiarity. Another thing is I think change scares people because you lose a sense of control um, and this expectation you have is no longer the same. So therefore, you know, when you encounter a situation where, oh, that's not the same anymore, right? Like say you always in the same house growing up and then you go back to your hometown and your parents have sold that home and now live in like a small, you know, downsized flat. You're like, uh, this isn't home, you know, like that sense of control of your environment, you having your own room, you know, expecting what the floor plan looks like. That's out of your control now and it's unsettling and I think the last thing is just like representation I think so you know that family home to you is tied into like so many memories that you have growing up and a sense of identity so when you go home and that home is no longer your home it's sold as a different family living there this like representation of what that house meant to you it kind of feels like oh have I lost touch and connection with all of those memories that I had, right? Like, what do I now attach that to? That home it's represented so much for like the family and your own personal memories growing up. So, yeah, I think, I think you can have a very negative reaction to that sometimes because maybe it's like, you know, if, if somebody changed something that you liked and you had a, a memory to attach to it, like think about, Think about, okay, a food at a restaurant. Say it's got the best pie and they've been selling this one pie you like for ages, like this pie shop, right? Okay, you like that steak and mushroom pie. Somebody else likes whatever shepherd's pie, okay? But then 
people stop eating the steak and mushroom pie so they discontinue it. You, from a change perspective, would be like, what on earth are you doing? Like, why have you changed that? That meant X, Y, Z to me. Like, I have so much, you know, satisfaction attached to that. But why have you taken that away from me? And I feel like the negative reaction is just like, why do people have to change things that like, it's fine the way it is, right? But it's crazy because if you think about it, like I'm sure thousands of people that pie shop have a connection to that pie shop and what it offers them. So it's only natural that, you know, there's going to be an evolution. Things will change. Your steak and mushroom pie apparently is no longer popular anymore, which is probably not possible because that's probably like one of the most popular flavors. Probably should have chosen a more unique flavor. But um, yeah, you get what I'm trying to say is like, you think that like your representation and attachment to something is so personal, which it is, but then you think of the scheme of things like, oh, what's well, like about a thousand other people have an attachment to that place. And it's so, it's also subjective and independent to each person. So like, how can we have such a strong attachment to something um, and fear that change when it's kind of inevitable, inevitable is my view. Um, okay, so I wanted to continue on some examples so I feel like things that people get upset about when change happens. So one thing I think is like places. For me, for example, I used I grew up in Box Hill North in Melbourne. Um, and two things. So like I grew up in the same home until I was 16 and then we moved. Um, and that home, I remember we sold it. It was quite sad because like we went to go visit again maybe a year or two later. And the home was like completely different to – what my family and I remember it as and like the way that it was taken care of and everything it just had changed so much and that was very jolting because you know somewhere that you grew up and have such fond memories with and then to see other people have a very different experience there you're kind of like whoa that's changed a lot and that sort of change is very scary and yeah it's a lot to take in right it's emotional because you have so much attached to that place. I think that's one place that I definitely feel a lot of change and it takes time to really understand and detach and understand like your memories to that home and like live in your mind now. It's not physically there for you anymore. Another thing is, so growing up Boxer North, when I was growing up there in like what, 90s, early 2000s, 2010s, it was a very, still very, um, I would say like, I don't want to say, it was probably like a lot more like Hong Kong Chinese or Cantonese Chinese people, um, Vietnamese. Um, yeah. And uh, interest, uh, like a different mix in this. It was a very small shopping center. Very like bread top was like a big release there. Bubble cup was a big release. Like it was like, whoa, what's happening? And I remember over time as I was getting older, just seeing it change and becoming more modern and having like, more of a mainland Chinese influence um, with, you know, different types of food popping up, different stalls, you know, uh, kind of a monopoly of the different stores as well being owned by lots of people. I was like, whoa, what's happening? It's like getting gentrified. Um, and it was really interesting to observe because I know even at a young age, I was kind of like, oh, it's not the same anymore. I'm like, oh, that shop's gone. And that's even at a young age, you start to feel this sense of like, oh, I don't really love this change. Right. And the reason I didn't love it was because, you know, my favorite place to eat laksa was now gone or my, you know, my favorite place to eat Shanghai noodles was no longer there. Right. And because pretty much time went on and things changed, but I didn't like it because when I go back there and now even more and more as I get older, I feel like less familiar and less connected to the place that I grew up because it's so different from what it was when I was growing up like they now have like high-rise buildings they're like multi-level apartments it's crazy it's like super fancy and like quite expensive now and for me I'm like what is happening this is not the place that I grew up but it's an acceptance I think in that situation that you know and un not unfortunately but that's just how the world is right new people come in people flow out a new era will be like that and it can't forever stay as it is, even for the benefit of the suburb, it probably needs to change and evolve, um, whether good or bad. I'm gonna pause for a peanut butter break.
Um, okay, I'm going to announce something, and I know it's a bit disgusting of me, but I found a smooth peanut butter I like. Okay, so Darn Picks, you know, just having the best peanut butter. I, the other day, because they sent me some smooth peanut butter, and I was like, eh, I'm not going to eat that because I'm committed to the crunchy life. But however, I tried it the other day, and it was very tasty, and I was like, oh my God, what the hell? Oh. Smooth peanut butter. If I pick, I would like to publicly approve. So if you're out there and you like smooth peanut butter, I approve of you eating picks, but not Jif. Or Jiffy. Or what, yeah, Jif. Jif? Jiffy? Anyway, not those super processed craft ones. Okay. That's all I wanted to share with you today about peanut butter. Okay, going back to the pod. So um, I think the other area of change, which I feel like is like generally more positive, but it's, I guess it's more self-discovery because it's, I definitely think the changes within yourself um, are things that you – it's definitely something that you kind of like don't really notice that happens over time. And it might be from like, oh, you started that new job. You moved country. You made a new friend. You know, you you started to listen to different music and then got a different haircut and started, you know, your aesthetic changed, right? And these are things that happen over time. Like I honestly look back at myself. I look at photos of myself when I was like 22 and I'm like, oh my God, I know exactly what I was thinking then and how I like perceived myself, um, perceived certain things and like my views and certain things. And I don't think like a crazy amount's changed, but I definitely know there are areas where I'm like, oh, thank God I've changed because like I'm in so much better a space now. Like it's a lot more positive or, you know, you think, I think at any moment in life, you always feel like you know so much and that you're, I feel like you always think like, I'm at the pinnacle, you know, like I could not know more. Life could not get better. Oh, life gets better, but not always. You do go through hardship, but I feel like looking back is really like so interesting. And I think that's one of the things that, like is the Achilles heel of change is the ability to look back it's like all this retrospect looking back and being like oh that like you know that mushroom steak pie at that place was so good and now they've taken it away and now it's like a negative feeling towards that pie shop or you know like oh my home that I grew up in it was such an amazing place I had so much fun there but now I go back and I look at it and I'm like it's not the same as it used to be so it's this constant comparison of like what it was and what it is now that I think really creates this this feeling of like I don't know being let down or being sad because something isn't as it was as it once was um I think the biggest area that change really affects um people is with other people right so through friends family relationships I think this is the hardest place that change hits in my opinion because people just as like locations food blah 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 exist hold so much representation and like a sense of feeling as to what who who you are and if you think about it if we're attaching like such a strong connection of like this is how this place in an in an, like a non-breathing inanimate object is and like this expectation of like why is it like that anymore imagine the feeling on people and I feel like this is the area where like change gets really dicey in how we manage it because I think misunderstanding miscommunicating change is where people really fall into like a pit of like I get I feel like they get tunnel vision as to the more of like the oh, you've changed so much versus like, okay, why did they change? What caused the change? And more like the future side of change, you know what I mean? So say, okay, for example, I think I look back sometimes and I'm like, oh, like it's so interesting. I used to be friends with X, Y, Z. And like, I really wonder what happened at that time. Like, why am I, why, when did I stop being friends with them? I never feel like anything actually happened. But you know what? It was just time. Like, we went to a different primary school. We went to a different high school. We, we got different hobbies. We had made different friends. We had different interests. We did a different thing after high school. 
did a different like unit in university. Like small changes is what I'm saying, bundle up and create a bigger change and separation. Um, and like that, I think that's the natural progression of life is that, yeah, for me, I believe in having like really small, close knit group of friends that I'm really close with and that I feel like, you know, I, I fundamentally understand them very deeply as people. And I support them no matter what, who they are as people, because I like, they're my people, but I, and I, and I'm happy to see them grow in whatever direction they, they grow. Um, and so I feel like when with people, when we try to attach too much expectation of those people and who they're supposed to be in our minds from who we knew, it becomes really hard. And I think this is something that I can experience from like living abroad, right? Um, and, you know, you it's really hard to communicate to people the day-to-day -day things that you experience, especially when I lived in Myanmar or other countries, to so somebody who's, you know, living a completely different life to you somewhere in a different side of the world. It's very hard to me to communicate all the small changes that I see and experiences that I have that shape who I am now. And so I think there's this really interesting dynamic of being at home and going back to your hometown versus being me being here in Hong Kong, right? So whenever I go home to Melbourne, I have a great time because everything that I go back to is more or less the same. Like my friends are there, my parents are there, the home that we live in is there, right? And so everyone kind of naturally slips into these natural roles of like, hey, mom, hey, dad, I'm here living in your home. Yeah, like I'm the kid, you know? And that's like, that's preferably how I like it. Like my parents being my parents, I'm being their child. And then when I'm like visiting my friends, you know, I'm still the same now as I left, right? I'm still the same person, you know, I've just gotten a bit more experiences, but you know, going home to Melbourne helps me kind of go back into that persona and be that person in Melbourne. Whereas the difference when they come to visit me in like Hong Kong, it's so funny because I'm then my Hong Kong, I'm my Hong Kong like person because I'm I'm in my environment. I am who I am in this future current state, like my present self. Versus when I go home to Melbourne, I'm like my past self. It's kind of weird. It's a very it's a very weird separation. But like, so for instance, my parents come to visit me in Hong Kong. Maybe I'm not as relaxed as I am in Melbourne because now I'm like, oh, I have a great feel like a great responsibility to make sure you have a good time, like. I'm no longer like the child. I'm this grown adult living in an apartment, like living in a city, financing myself. And um, I'm just like a completely different person. And then like, I feel like for parents to observe that or friends to observe that, different personalities also very trippy and takes time to adapt to, right? And I think, you know, I've had like, I've had experiences with my parents where I feel like they felt I've changed or and I've become different than what I was when I was home. And I think, yeah, I think that can be seen as a negative, sure, if you want to. But I also think like that's where we kind of take the wrong step in me thinking like, oh, them saying I'm different is a negative thing because actually it's natural. I've moved to a different city. I live abroad. I'm by myself now. I don't have you know, I'm not who I was in Melbourne because that was me when I left. I was, I kind of left that at like 20, 21, 22, right? So it's only natural that I've evolved into this woman, independent, like it's been six years of living abroad that I am now a completely different person, have different thoughts, different experiences. And I think it's actually beautiful to evolve in that way. Same as when I go to visit, you know, my friends overseas and I see them having built this amazing life, um, evolved so much, all these different experiences. And yeah, completely, I'm completely okay with the fact that I might not fully ever understand some of the experiences, experiences they have. And that's fine. That's natural. And I think it's part of growing up and living life. Um, and so this leads me to like my final points, which I'm trying to make about like how to really adapt to change and manage it. And I really think like my key thing I think it comes down to is like is empathy. So um, Alex gave me a good example of empathy the other day because he was learning more about it. 
um, which was, so differences between sympathy and empathy. Sympathy is, so say somebody's stuck at the bottom of a well. Sympathy is standing at the top of the well and saying like, oh, I feel so bad for them like down there. Like, okay, oh, like that must really suck to be down there, right? Empathy is actually getting into the well and going down to the bottom of the well with them. So it's actually getting into somebody else's shoes, right? So they always say that growing up, like, you know, um, walk a mile in a, another man's shoes, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, like you'll learn so much about that other person. So I do really think that like a really great way to handle change, you know, when it's something that you're feeling, oh no, like my best friend's changing or my friends are changing or X, Y, Z is changing. This is more about people than location because yeah, I can't really get in the location shoes. But like getting into the shoes of that person and understanding like, oh, okay, like let's review it from their point of view. All of these things I've experienced, like I'm never going to fully understand that, but there must be a reason like, you know, why you've changed this way and really trying to understand and see something from their perspective as opposed to standing on the other side and being like, oh, well, you're not the same that I person that I used to know. Why did you change? Why aren't you the same person that laughs at X, Y, Z jokes, right? Okay. Another thing I think we can really work on is um, not living in the past. So I feel a great sense of like um, an affliction to change often stems from people living in the past and wanting something to be the same as what it used to be, right? So like I've seen – Alex go through that with some of these guy friends and they're like, oh, like you've changed. Like you're not, you don't drink as much as you used to. You don't do X, Y, Z. And he's just like, I just have different priorities now, right? And I think being a good person in somebody's life and a supporter is really sitting down and understanding like, hey, that's great. You know what I mean? Like this is, I'm, this is not my life. That's your life. If you're happy in that position and in that space, great. Like good for you right? It's not them living their lives to upkeep your memories or your experiences or your nostalgia. I think that's a really clear point. Um, and I think, yeah, I think embracing that change isn't a bad thing, right? Like, okay, some people can change maybe in not the best way or some things can change in the not best way, but accept it. Like, what are you going to do about it? Everybody is their own individual. A, a restaurant is a restaurant. They're going to make their own decisions. There's no point sitting there harping on about how the change is not what you wanted because you know what? The world's going to keep spinning and you're just going to be standing there hoping that it used to be what it used to be, right? Don't waste your time. And I think the last thing is like, I kind of attached to that is just one, you can't control other people, right? So don't spend so much of your time trying to get things back to what they used to be. Actually, I think the other great thing to do is focusing on, hey, I really care about this person. They are like this now. And you know what? I see really a great amount of positives in that. And they're so happy. Who am I to sit here and force them to be someone that they used to be when I'm not living in their body? I'm not that person. I think it's all about just like letting go. You know, it's okay. Try to connect with that person, if it's really like, you know, if you really lose alignment in values or interest as people, that's okay. That's natural and normal. Like friendships can end. Experiences can end. You going to that restaurant can end, right? And it's just an acceptance that, yay, I had that memory. I had that experience. I had that great friendship with that person when they were X, Y, Z, and that's why we got along so great. But you know what, now maybe we just don't and then we don't gel that well, fine, all good. You know, just let people live their lives and be in peace. Anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this podcast and it made sense to you. I am essentially just sharing my thoughts on changes and trying to dissect it myself. Um, will anyone ever really perfectly absorb and adapt to change? Probably not because we're human, we have emotions. But can we be more understanding and communicate better and listen more to really actually understand why some, like, you know, what is the output of this change? You know what I mean? Like why think, sit there and think so hard about 
why the changes happen and how much has changed. Why not just sit there and think about like, oh, embrace it. Cool. Cool. A new dish on the menu. You got rid of my old dish. No worries. I'll try something new. Life is about adventure. Life is about trying new things. Life is about learning and evolving as a human. You're not always going to be the same. And if you are, well, that'd be damn boring. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the pod. See you next week. Bye.